a device that converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy is called an AC generator. Let's have a look at the construction and working of this AC generator in more detail. AC generators are these huge machines, but the very heart of an AC generator is a coil of fire like this, a rectangular coil of fire. And it has two rings attached to it. These two rings are referred to as the slip rings. The rings are in contact with these two carbon brushes. These carbon brushes act as conductors and they conduct the electric current that is generated through this generator. And this qualifier is placed between two opposite poles of permanent magnets. The output generator is then delivered to this lamp or any other output source. How does it work? The coil is rotated by means of any mechanical source. So in this situation, this wind energy supplied through these propellers will cause this coil to rotate. And as he discussed in electromagnetic induction, that whenever a coil of wire is inside of a magnetic field, the number of magnetic field lines that are passing through the coil of fire is called the magnetic flux. And if the magnetic flux through the coil of fire changes, that induces an EMS in the coil of wire. So the magnetic field points from north to south. And the coil of fire is placed such that there are a few magnetic lines of force that are passing through this coil of fire. But as the coil is stationary, the magnetic flux is not changing. But as the coil starts to spin or rotate due to the mechanical energy provided to it, it cuts through these magnetic lines of force. And hence the magnetic flux changes. That changing magnetic flux induces an EMF in this coil. And hence, a current begins to flow through the coil of fire. And as you could see, the direction of the current induced keeps on changing its direction in accordance with Lenz's law. And as discussed in Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, the value of this induced EMF can be increased if the coil can move quicker that is, if the rate of change of flux is higher, the induced EMF would be much higher, as indicated by the brightness of this lamp. So let's have a look at how the flux changes through the coil. So imagine these lines of force here representing the magnetic flux that can pass through this coil of fire. So if the coil moves towards, then the flux changes. Now this coil of fire has an area and we can represent the area of the coil by drawing a vector. If this coil is instead of being horizontal in a vertical position, the area of the coil again is represented by this black vector. Now in this position though, the magnetic flux passing through the coil is oh. maximum but if you see the angle between the area of the coil and the magnetic flux, the angle comes out to be zero. Now the same coil of wire is placed horizontally. The area vector makes an angle of 90 degrees with the magnetic field lines. But in this situation, the flux passing through the coil is oh. zero. That means if the coil rotates through a magnetic field, the angle between the area vector and the magnetic field lines changes. Hence, the magnetic flux through the coil changes. Let's have a look at that. So now, if the coil is parallel to the magnetic field lines and the flux passing through it is zero, and the coil is now made to rotate, 
it cuts through this magnetic field lines and the magnetic flux passing through the coil of wire increases. And when it reaches a vertical position, the flux passing through it is maximum. But if the coil is rotated further, the flux again starts to decrease. And in this position, you could see that the flux again becomes zero. But now the area vector is pointing downwards. So if you keep rotating it, in this position, the coil will have maximum flux passing through it, but the area vector now makes an angle of 180 degrees with the magnetic field lines. And eventually, after one complete rotation, the coil re reaches a position that it was at the start where the magnetic flux passing through the coil is zero. We can actually draw a graph between the flux passing through this coil of wire time. So initially the coil is horizontal, so the flux is zero, but then the coil is rotated and the flux starts to increase. So if you plot a graph for flux versus time, it will look like this. As the coil keeps on rotating, the flux keeps on changing. And what we get is a sine wave. Now, remember, the induced EMS is proportional to the rate of change of flux and not the flux itself. So that means for this particular graph that we have, we need to find the rate at which the flux is changing. And you'd remember from mathematics that if you want to find the rate of change, you have to find the gradient or the slope of a graph's curve. So you can find the slope at different points on this, on this curve, and then we can get the value of induced EMF. So now plotting two graphs here, one flux versus time, and the other one would be the induced EMF or the voltage versus time. And to arrive at a voltage versus time graph, it has to it has to find the slope of the flux versus time graph at different positions. So starting with the first position here, the graph starts from zero since the flux was zero at the start, and then it curved upwards and reached a maximum. So to find the rate of change, we need to find the slope of the graph. And to find the slope of this graph, we need to draw tangents at different points. So first of all, the tangent is drawn here at the maximum position. Now, at this position, you could see the tangent is parallel. Hence, the slope is zero. So at this position, the rate of change of flux is zero. And since the rate of change of flux is proportional to the EMF induced, so that means at this position, the EMF induced would be zero. So this position corresponds to a zero on the voltage versus time graph. And the starting position, though, at the starting position, the rate of change is maximum. So that position would correspond to a maximum voltage value. So that means the voltage versus time graph would start from a maximum value and then slope downwards and become zero. Now coming back to the flux versus time graph, as it slopes downwards, it reaches zero when the coil was parallel to the magnetic field lines. But again, finding the slope at this point, the slope would be maximum by drawing a tangent. But you could see this tangent is negative as compared to the first tangent. So you'd get a maximum value again here, but that maximum would be a negative maximum. So that means the voltage versus time graph would then slope downwards towards a maximum voltage value. So, following the same procedure, the flux versus time graph looks like this, finding the slope at different positions and getting the corresponding positions of the voltage versus time graph. We need to complete the graph for voltage versus time by finding the slopes at different positions. And hence, you'd get a voltage versus time graph, which is actually a cosine curve instead of a sine curve. 
So this graph tells us that when the flux is maximum, the rate of change of flux is zero, and hence EMF induced would be zero at all those positions. And at positions where the flux is zero, the rate of change of flux is maximum, hence the induced EMF is also maximum at these positions. So that means for an AC generator, we get a constantly varying output because of the coil of fire that is rotating between two opposite poles of a magnet. And because the induced EMF that is generated at the output terminals is proportional to the rate of change of flux. And since the coil is rotating, the flux is constant, constantly changing. And if the coil rotates faster, you could see that the rate of change of flux would be higher, and that would actually induce a higher EMF as indicated by the amplitude of this voltage versus time graph. So this was the construction and working of an AC generator, but the, the voltage that is generated at the AC generator can be transmitted, but before transmission, the voltage is either stepped up or stepped down. And there's a very important device that steps up or steps down the voltage produced by the AC generator, and that is called the transformer. And that is our next topic. And you could click on the video on your screen to look up for that topic. See you in that video.